Hello crafty friends, welcome to today's 6x6 paper pad video. Last night when I was preparing for today's video, I made this card using the pastel paper pad that we've been using throughout this whole series. Don't worry if you haven't got the same paper pads as I've got, you can use any patterned paper or even DIY patterned paper that you've got in your stash. But this is the card I made with the pastel paper pad. And I thought I'd share with you how I made it today, but make it with this greeny, bluey, browny paper pad. So the first thing that I did was create my card panel. I've got a piece of smooth white cardstock here. I've got my cutting plates set up for die cutting. And I'm gonna put a bit of card here. This is just a bit of old packaging and use it to protect the front of my card from the scratches in the cutting plate. So here is a stitched rectangle die and I'm going to put my card on top there like that and my cutting plate and run it through my cuttle bug here. So now I've got my rectangle I want to create this aperture in it and I did that using this border die. You can use any border die that you like. And I just placed it where I wanted to chop. And I held it in place with a sticky note to keep it in place, obviously, as I've just said. But also these sticky notes are very thin, so when you die cut with them, they don't leave an impression in your panel. Again, I'm going to flip that over so that the front of my card is protected by this card here. Now I should be able to peel that up. And that's the top bit that I want to keep. So I've cut the panel this way round, but to chop the bottom off, I need to flip this, well, tw turn it, I suppose, round like that, because I've got dots and the cutting line, and I want the dots to be on the bit that I'm keeping, not on the bit that I'm losing, as it were. If you haven't got sticky notes, you can always use a bit of washi, but put the washi on the side of the card that you're discarding. So this is the bit I wanna keep, and this is the bit I'm getting rid of. So it doesn't matter if the washi leaves a mark. Again, it's quite thin, so it's probably not gonna leave an indentation. I'll flip it over to protect it and die cut. And now I can take that off, put that to one side, and I've got my two bits that I want to keep. So now I want to select a pattern paper to go in the background behind the aperture. I'm thinking I'm gonna keep a yellow paper for the flowers and a green paper for the leaves. So I've got a choice really of this brown or this really dark brown. So I'm gonna take one of each and see what it looks like. So that's quite strong and that's very dark. I think I'm going to choose this one because my focal point here will stand out best on it. But let me know in the comments which one you would choose. Would you go for this browner, sort of lighter browner one or this really dark brown one? To get going with the sticking together, I'm going to put glue on the back of this and pop it here like that right up against the edge so it's flush on both sides and now I've got my guillotine I've got that lined up straight in my trimmer and I'm going to trim off right to that edge there now I don't want the full height of this because it will cover up too much of the front of my card blank so I'll chop a little bit off the top and glue this bit in the top right hand corner. Again, making sure it's lined up perfectly. So I like that, that looks very striking. So we've got here an A6 card blank. I'm going to stick this panel on top. And I'm going to press that down firmly with a bit of non-stick deli paper on top. You can use any non-stick paper for this. Just protects the card 
from sticky fingers to give my focal point something to sit on i've got a bit of vellum and this circle die with hearts around the outside you could just use a plain circle or a stitch circle or a doily whatever took your fancy so that's going to sit about here with its center point at about a third in from this side and a third down from the top I'm going to cut my leaves from this green panned paper from the pad but before I do I'm going to give it a bit of extra colour with Hot Tub from Catherine Pooler which is one of the colours that I matched when I swatched out my inks to see which ones would work with this particular paper pad. If you want more information about that check out the first video in the series there is a playlist linked in the video description. When I did this one I used a green paper from the pastel pad and matched it with cracked pistachio and went over it before I die cut it. That was a distress oxide but this is a Catherine Pula. I'm just going to gently colour enough to die cut from and it really doesn't matter if it's a bit blotchy because a, you're not going to notice once it's die cut, and B, it's going to be covered with flowers for the most part. But I like having that little bit of colour and texture in the background. In fact, sometimes the more variation on these little things you get, the better. It stops everything looking too samey. So I think that stands out really nicely on there. You could, if you wanted, use an embossing tool and a bit of a foam pad like this. This is just fun foam or craft foam. You could give your leaves a bit of a curl. You can do it from the front or the back, depending on what direction you want the curl. Just run the tool over it. But honestly, with this particular card, by the time the flowers are on top, it'll probably be pretty flat. We'll leave that there like that. For my flowers, I'm going to cut out lots in different sizes using this die. And again, before I cut this, I'm going to colour it. And I'm going to use for this one, Scattered Straw Distress Oxide. I'll just go over it a little bit to make the white parts a little bit yellower. It's not a perfect match colour wise, but it works, I think. Just makes them a bit more solid. There's ever such a light dusting. So I've cut all my flowers, sorted them out into size and put a bit of glue, just some high tech PVA glue here. And I'm going to build my flowers by putting a smaller flower on top of a larger flower, twisting it slightly relative to each other so that they overlap like that. Not going to need all these flowers for this card but I'll save the spare ones for something else. So to give my flowers a little bit of dimension I'm just going to press down in the middle with this tool. For the large flowers I use the big end and for the little flowers I use the little end. Now it's time to do a bit of assembling. I'm just going to put a bit of a dot of glue on the back of each leaf and a bit on the stem and take my vellum circle and lay that on top like that just press it down gently so that that glue sticks to the vellum and then I'll flip it over and put some glue on the back of the vellum where it will be hidden by the leaves I will take a tiny little bit of this crafter's companion tape runner which is pretty good for vellum it doesn't show through really and put a little bit on the underside of each side there to hold it down and then pop that where we had it on the thirds there the intersection of the thirds and now I'm going to add my flowers just dipping them in the glue and placing them on my leafy thing in a pleasing arrangement pressing them down a little bit not so much to lose 
the definition or the dimension that I gave it, but enough so that it sticks properly. Right, I'm happy with that. I'm going to put the flower centres on in a minute, but I'm going to add a sentiment first. From a sentiment, I've got this Have a Great Birthday that I stamped out in black ink. And I'm going to cut it out with this stitched banner die. It's obviously too long, but I'm actually going to tuck that end under the flowers so it doesn't have to uh, be the right length, as it were. That's going to snuggle in there like that. I'm going to pop a little bit of card under this end. I'll just use the other end of the, the banner, the bit that I snipped off, because it's going over some vellum and a bit of the leaf. And I want to keep it level, really. On this card, I use gold for my flower centres because they stood out well on the purple flowers. But I think if I use gold on this one, they'll get lost in that yellow. So I'm going to use white. But because I've got some scattered straw on my paper, they may absorb some of the colour. But I think that'll be OK. I don't think they'll um, go too yellow. I think I forgot to say that I made the flowers on this one using the purple stripy paper from the pastel paper pad. And I added some shaded lilac on top to make it more solid. And then I just dusted a bit of white acrylic over to break it up a bit. I didn't need to do the acrylic on these, I don't think. I think they stand out nicely like that. Right, that's it. That's this card finished. I hope you found the video helpful and it's given you some ideas of something you can do with whatever papers that you have in your stash that you want to use up. If it has, please do let me know in the comments. Leave a thumbs up, subscribe, ring the notification bell and I'll see you back here tomorrow for another video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.